Greetings fellow retro computer technicians and retro gamers! In my first video I talked about how to use a USB flash drive on Windows 98. If you haven't seen that yet you can check it out on my channel. Today on the topic of memory I'm going to discuss storage alternatives for mechanical hard drives on vintage machines. Now why would we want to do that? We love hearing that winding up of the hard drive sound when you turn on that old computer and hearing it clicking when it's thinking. Well unfortunately that clicking has turned into click clack click clack on a lot of machines because they are failing. They have moving parts inside of them and they are prone to wearing out over time. Also a lot of e-way sites have drilled holes in these to deliberately destroy them and so we found ourselves in the situation that we're in where we have far more vintage computers out there than we have of these wonderful old mechanical hard drives. Although you wouldn't know it from this hoard that I've stashed here. Ha 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 ha. Oh sorry. So anyway we've got uh, some alternatives here. I'm going to look at these three. I've got a CF to IDE adapter. We've got a SD to IDE option. Also a SATA to IDE adapter with a solid state drive. We're going to check out which ones are working the best, uh, which ones are the fastest, which are the most cost effective. I've been running all three of these in various computers in the lab for the last uh, couple of weeks. Also, I posed the question to a Facebook group for working on vintage computers. We'll see what the experts have to say as they weigh in on what they prefer and what they've seen. Let's get to it. All right, I've got my ID hard drive collection nicely tucked away in its static resistant home. First, we're going to discuss the CF option. This particular adapter I bought off of eBay. Uh, you just Google uh, CF to IDE adapter and you'll find a number of other websites uh, uh, to buy them from. I've seen them on Amazon, I've seen them on AliExpress or eBay where I found them. Uh, so this particular uh, card has a, a female connection. They do make them with male uh, that you can uh, mount in one of the bays with a cable. I like the female because you can put it directly on the motherboard. I bought an eight gigabyte card with it that uh, would be that will be plenty for this old Dell that I'm going to be putting it in it goes directly on the board the power connection can either be for the floppy uh, or for uh, the larger uh, power uh, connector uh, I've uh, it comes this one this particular one came with adapter to allow for both um, it also came when I bought it with the number of cylinders, heads, and sectors. But just a, a note about that, when you configure it in the BIOS, uh, it did limit the amount of memory uh, for uh, when I did that. It cut it down to four. When I selected auto, it, uh, it, it, it recognized it and gave me all eight. So we'll go ahead and get it powered up and configure it in the BIOS. So we'll go ahead and go into the BIOS settings to the IDE primary master configuration, set it to auto if possible. Hopefully it recognizes it. A lot of the newer BIOSes, newer from the 90s, late 90s, uh, will recognize this automatically. Uh, but as mentioned, you can set the number of cylinders, heads, and sectors, uh, uh, and, and it will likely limit your size, though, of the card. So uh, go ahead and save it, exit it. Okay, so it did detect it. It says the fixed disk. And now, there we go, invalid system disk. So we'll go ahead and put a DOS boot disk in there. So DOS works good. I went ahead and ran FDisk and did a DOS partition. Make sure you delete the non-DOS partition first. I uh, went ahead and copied over some of the DOS system files. There it is at the C prompt. I'm going to go ahead and install Windows 98 on it, and we'll check it out how it runs. So there it is running Windows 98. Isn't editing great how we can just skip all that painful configuring? So we'll go ahead and run a couple of games and see how they run. And of course we'll start out with Doom. Alright, runs great. We'll go ahead and try some Rise of the Triad. Of course, I switched to a CRT because it's a travesty to play these games on an LCD. Try some Duke.
Next, we'll go ahead and try out the SD to IDE adapter. Now, this one has a male connection on it, so we'll go ahead and hook up an IDE cable to it and connect the other end to the motherboard. Uh, something to be mindful of this one, uh, don't set it directly on any metal so it doesn't short out. Uh, I have seen people uh, 3D print some standoffs for it. Uh, one cool thing that I saw somebody do is they put it in a bay and uh, they, they had a they had a cover that they 3D printed that had a had a slot so they could take it in and out of of the the case. So I, I don't uh, I don't know. I assume that they there are people that have made those things uh, out there by now. Uh, you could just do some searching around uh, to to check that out. Um, but uh, but there are a number of options with mounting this. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave it outside of the case so it doesn't risk shorting out. I'll go ahead and uh, hook up the power to it and we'll get it configured. So we're in the BIOS settings and it did recognize it automatically as an SD adapter and it sees the one gigabyte card that's in it currently. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save those changes and exit. I had to swap out the old card that I was using. I was using a one gigabyte SanDisk card and it kept hanging even on installing DOS. So I don't know what the issue was, but I've swapped it out with this 16 gigabyte card and it seems to be working. I've got the Windows 98 installation going right now. So far, so good. One thing to note, it was very convenient to swap the cards out. Uh, this would make a fantastic secondary drive, especially on the older machines that have capacity issues. It would be very convenient. Uh, but we'll continue this installation and see how it goes. With about four minutes left on the installation, ah, it gave me an illegal operation. So that could have been caused by a number of things, but with the same Windows 98 installation CD, that did not occur when I installed it on the CF card. So uh, I'll see if it can continue, but uh, this is not boding well for the SD card. So I installed Windows 98 and then I went home for the evening and this morning the computer would not boot up. So I looked at this and I noticed the card detect light was not on. So I took the card out and put it back in and it came back on and it booted up. But now it says that Windows has corrupt and missing files. So uh, another strike against the SD card. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the solid state drive. This is a more modern solution. Uh, looks up pretty straightforward uh, here. I picked up both of these on Amazon. This particular one is by a name brand. I'm using a Kingston solid state drive with the SATA adapter. So go ahead and hook that up and get started. All right, so the bias detected this one right away. I didn't even have to go into the setup. I'm going to go ahead and install Windows 98 from the CD. It looks like in the setup for this one, it's able to configure the unallocated disk space uh, automatically uh, through the setup program. Uh, the other ones, uh, I had to run FDisk for some reason. So uh, we'll go ahead and go through the prompts and install Windows 98 on the solid state drive. So Windows 98 installation is complete. It installed absolutely flawlessly. There were no problems whatsoever. Very fast install as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll load up and test some Doom. Works great. I'll go ahead and do a little speed test. We'll start with the CF card from the point where the drives are detected. And now the solid state drive.
you can see it's lightning fast. Solid State Drive was a little faster than the CF card. I went ahead and asked the members of the Vintage Computer Club Facebook page what their thoughts were and what they've experienced. Fernando says that the CF to IDE is the best option in terms of speed and cost. Mike points out that CF uses an IDE interface. Baptiste also says that. Uh, Frank uh, mentions that he's been running CF cards in 386s and 486s for about five years without any failures. Jacques says he chooses SATA to an IDE adapter. He also points out that SD cards won't last long if there's a lot of writes on those cards. Uh, Tomas uh, says SD card adapters are way more prone to failure. Here are my final thoughts on these three storage options. We'll start with the CF card. This one was the most affordable. The adapter was only about $8. A good CF card to go in that adapter will set you back about $15. I've been running these for about two weeks on two different computers in the lab with no issues. It was relatively easy to configure. Uh, I've uh, Talking with the experts, uh, they were saying the same thing. There were several folks that said they had run it for several years without any failures. So I would definitely recommend this as an option for primary storage in vintage machines. Next we'll talk about the SD card. This one I would not recommend for primary storage. However, I would recommend it as secondary storage. It's not very expensive. It was uh, it was only it was about $14, but these uh, cards too, you get what you pay for. I saw some as cheap as $4 uh, and uh, others uh, up from there. So, uh, again, I would not recommend this for anything really important, uh, but it's nice to have access to that that amount of storage on vintage machines if you set these up as a secondary drive. And last, we'll talk about the SATA 2 IDE option. This one's great for newer machines, newer from the late 90s. I didn't have any issue on a Pentium 2 getting this set up. It was very easy to configure. I am told it may have some problems on, on much older machines. It's very fast. The, the adapter was only about $10. Uh, this uh, name brand, Solid State Drive, was about $15. So, relatively affordable. Uh, it's in line with the CF pricing, uh, but this is another option that I would recommend as an alternative. Well, there you have it. I hope this has been helpful to some folks, and if you like what you saw, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel.